Over the past year during development of Drone Pan, I've learned a lot about creating and stitching aerial panoramas. Now, I'm by no means an expert, but in this video, I wanted to uh, demonstrate a new feature of Drone Pan which supports the DJI Osmo, as well as talk about the new Facebook 360 photo upload feature where you can take a panorama, stitch it together, and then upload it to Facebook to get a 360 perspective. So this is one that I shot with Osmo of our high school football stadium under construction. And then I'll go over to Facebook and you can see the same image and I'll go full screen with it. And now we have 360 panoramas in all their glory that we can share with our friends and family. If you're not familiar with Osmo, it's a great little handheld three axis stabilized gimbal that carries the X3 camera, the same camera that flies with the Inspire One. It also supports the X5 with different lenses. Now in this case, I'm going to demonstrate my Osmo using the X3 because I don't have the X5 and just want to give a special thanks to Chris from Norway for getting involved with the drone pan development and making drone pan compatible with the Osmo. The current version of drone pan in the App Store does support Osmo as well as the Phantom 3, Phantom 4, and Inspire 1. So I definitely encourage you to check it out. And want to demonstrate just some of the settings that come with drone pan when you're shooting a panorama with the Osmo. You have a start delay just in case you want to get out of the way when your camera is running through the panorama sequence. You have the ability to specify number of photos per row. In most cases, six should be fine unless you're shooting with a different lens and an X5 camera. Here you can see that I have six photos set. And then for number of rows, in this case, I just shot three. Skyro is really only applicable to drones where, where you want to get more of the sky in your shot. Once you have your settings ready to go, all you do is press the play button. You can see I've started the sequence here and drone pan will then take care of all the pitch and yaw angles, taking a photo at each location. And once that's done, you have your images ready to stitch together. Here's a quick time lapse of drone pan running on Osmo. You can see the camera pitching and yawing to each of the angles that I specified in the settings. And finally, the last shot is the zenith shot where it will go straight up, take that photo, and then the panorama process is complete. Here are 31 photos that I shot the other day with drone pan for Osmo. And I'm going to go ahead and load them into AutoPano Pro. So we'll go ahead and select all of these, open, and I've done previous videos that talk about AutoPano Pro and it just makes it super easy to get a stitch panorama. I've used PT GUI, Microsoft Ice and some other tools and I've just found that for the least amount of user intervention that AutoPano Pro does a great job. Here on the right you can see a stitch preview of these images and what I'll do next is I'll go to edit and I haven't quite perfected how to get the nadir shot with Osmo. There's some different techniques. So for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to do an auto crop, which will cut out this area at the bottom as well as a little bit of the sky at the top. And once we do that, I'll click the green checkbox. And all we need to do is have this photo rendered and the full resolution stitching will begin. This will take anywhere from three to four minutes. Stitching is complete. Now let's take a quick look at the output of the image. You can see here it is and I can zoom in and you can just see the level of detail and AutoPano just does an amazing job of matching everything up and getting it stitched together seamlessly. I've gone ahead and opened this in GIMP and if you've watched previous videos that I've done for the aerial panoramas, this is where you would stitch in maybe a fake sky or if you're shooting with Osmo you might do some nadir patching at the bottom. Maybe you want to do some color correction but for the sake of this demonstration I'm going to use the output as is and in the case of Autopano 
I want to demonstrate some of the metadata that comes along with this image. Now, this is important for Facebook because as you upload your image, Facebook reads some of this EXIF and XMP data to determine that it's a 360 degree photo. Now, there are two more considerations that we have to make before uploading to Facebook. Right now, Facebook will only support 360 images that are 41 million pixels or less. And you can see here, I tried to upload the stitched imagery out of Autopano Pro and it tells me that it needs to be 41 million pixels or less, as well as less than 30,000 pixels in any dimension. So what we're going to need to do is scale this down. I'll scale the image and I'll just do, let's say 10,000 by 3,700, which is roughly 37 million pixels. I'll go ahead and scale that. My guess is that Facebook will remove that restriction in the near future just so that we can get higher resolution panoramas. Now the last thing we're going to need to do, and it's very important, if you're exporting out of GIMP, you want to make sure that you keep the metadata. So I'm going to just give that a new name. And you can see here under advanced options, you want to make sure that save EXIF and save XMP data are checked so that metadata does get exported and then Facebook will recognize this image. So after scaling the image and maintaining the EXIF data, I'll go ahead and just select that scaled image that I just created, click open, and you can see immediately that Facebook reads that data and recognizes that it's a 360 photo. And here you can see the final upload. And just recently, Facebook added support for full screen mode, which is awesome. Now your panorama can go full screen and you'll be able to pan all the way up to the zenith, down to the nadir. You can see mine's blurred out just because I didn't have imagery for that straight down shot. So I just wanted to share this tutorial for those that are interested in doing panoramas either with their DJI aircraft or the Osmo and I also encourage you guys to join our Facebook group. There's just some amazing panoramas coming in now that Facebook has added support for 360 photos. Once again, DronePan is completely free so I'd encourage you to download it and if you're a developer or interested in getting into development DronePan is open source and available for you to contribute to. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.